Uh, welcome back, and you are listening to a special edition of Street Soldiers Alive and Free Radio, a live, live, you know, you're on live TV. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> live town hall show to address violence in the community and to help improve the relationship between local police and youth. And we're really talking, in this case, really featuring on two police departments, San Francisco in Oakland, and uh, the title of tonight's theme is Community and Police Relations, How Do We Make It Better? We just heard from the officers uh, in, in both cities, and uh, I, I really want to do this, panel. We, we did this on the show before. It was so interesting that I just haven't had a part of it. Now, we won't, you know, we're going to do our best here. This particular panel is entitled Know Your Rights. and. This is really, this is personal. This is something I wish I, I wanted to know when I was a kid running around South Central Los Angeles. <laughs> okay. um, and I work with a lot of young people, and these are the questions that always come up. And, and, and the, really, I think at the heart of this is, 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 is informing young people, when is the, what do I have to comply with? What do I have to comply with? What, do I have to do anything the police tell me to do? Um, so th this, this, this panel is really going to explore and explain exactly what rights citizens have uh, in their encounters with the police. And I was thinking really with traffic stops, with searches, you have to show identification, that sort of thing. Um, and I'm not saying to disobey anything, but I think, you know, they really got to know, uh, you know, what they, what they can and can't do. And, and, and if we're, and if we say something wrong, we had the police over there who will say, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know if you give me the best advice. So this might be a very, very good, good panel. I'm hoping that it is. And, and, and helping with this is Lisa Katz, who is the Deputy Public Defender from the San Francisco Office of the Public Defender, and a lady who I just met, just got her today, Francisco <laughs> Serrano, Deputy Public Defender of Alameda, from Alameda County's Office of Public, uh, Public Defender's Office. You two have at it. The young people are waiting. Go for it. Who's first? Well, why don't you start, because you had a really good rap you wanted to start with. <laughs> All right. I'm Francesca Serrano. I'm from the Alameda County Public Defender's Office. And we actually have a Learn Your Rights in California, or a Lyric program, where we go into the local high schools and we talk to young people about their rights when they're interacting with the police. And there's three main things that we talk to young people about. I'm taking notes. <laughs> Y'all take listen. Y'all listen? Okay. And we talk to the young people about the importance of the language that we teach them. There's three main phrases. The first of which is, am I free to go? And a lot of people don't understand that they do not have to talk to police officers. A police officer may approach you and begin to talk to you and we kind of inform them that you know, a police officer's job is to investigate crimes, and like the officer spoke to, they're targeting people who have committed crimes or they believe have committed crimes. And so we inform our young people that you do not have to talk to the police. And the first way to know whether or not a police officer has enough information to force you to continue engaging is, am I free to go? And you know, that's the first thing to ask. And I always tell the young people when we're talking to them, you don't have to say that right off the bat. <laughs> you know, as soon as an officer approaches you, you don't have to say, am, am I, I free, free to, to go? go? Look, but, I he ain't even said nothing yet. Right. Like, can, can I go? <laughs> it, you know, I get a lot of questions from young people. Do I have to say anything at all? And right. you don't have to say anything at all. But hmm. the best way to inform an officer about the fact that you know your rights is to ask these type of questions. Am mm -hmm. I free to go? Okay. Just that question in that language informs a police officer that you are aware of what your rights are in that situation. And depending on how they answer that question, either they'll say yes and you can turn around and walk away and you do not have to have a conversation, you do not have to answer any questions, mm -hmm. or alternatively they will say no, you're not free to go. And at that point, you will know that an officer has reasonable suspicion to continue talking to you. And at that point, you're detained. And so then the next phrase that we... Or at least they believe that they do. They believe that they do. And at that point, you are aware that that officer believes that you are not free to go, which is important to know. And at that point, the next thing we teach young people is to ask... Um, or to, ex to 
implement their right not to say anything. Mm -hmm. That there's certain things that you do have to share with an officer. You have to tell them your name. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them. Uh, you have to give ID if you have it. Okay. You also, if you're a minor, have to give your parents information. Okay. And you need to give a date of birth. And we tell young people that not giving that information or giving false information in and of itself is a crime. Uh, okay. So there That's is certain enough. things yeah. that you have to give an officer if they tell you you're not free to go. And we let young people know that because a lot of people don't know. Say those things one more time. You have to give your name. Okay. You have to give your date of birth. If you're a minor, you have to give your parents information. And if you have ID, you need to give that as well. Okay. So those are the only things you have to give. In this political climate, we also always inform our minors that you do not have to tell an officer if you are a citizen or if you are not a citizen. Yeah, yeah. That is not something that an officer is entitled to know right mm. off the bat. And, and that's that important. includes you don't have to give your social security number. Exactly. And you don't have to tell whether or not you have a social security Well, given this climate of ice and all of that, I can see, yeah, that's good to know, too. They it's don't have in, to do that. It's you know. very important for people to know. And so then once you're, you know you're detained, then the search issue comes up, whether mm -hmm. or not you can be searched. Mm -hmm. And so we always inform people about what the Fourth Amendment is, that you have a right against being searched by the police. It, it's a constitutional right that you have. And without a warrant the only thing that allows you to give up that right is your consent saying that somebody can search you and so it's very important to be able to understand to say I do not consent to search but it's also very important to know that if an officer commands you to give over your belongings that you don't want to engage in any kind of altercation with that officer and so we teach minors and the youth that we talk to, to if an officer commands them to allow them to search, to hand over belongings, but to continue to say as they're handing over those belongings, I do not consent to this search. And the officer spoke about how most police departments in the Bay Area now have recording devices. And mm -hmm. so that comes into play if an officer searches you and does not have a valid basis to search you, if you end up being arrested or convicted of a crime, if you are on recording saying, I do not consent to that this search, and they don't have a valid basis for it, that's really important on the other end. And so we don't ever tell youth or minors to fight with the police or to try and say, no, no, right. I don't, you don't have the right to search me right now. But we do say, continue to say to the officer very calmly, very clearly that I do not consent to this search. And then finally, um, you know, if you end up being arrested by an officer, the third thing that we teach to young people is once you're in that position where you're being questioned by an officer, where you are arrested, where you are in that situation, to say, I am going to remain silent and I want a lawyer. And mm -hmm. how important it is to very clearly say, I want a lawyer. And the fact that if you say, I want to talk to my parents, or maybe I should get a lawyer, or this doesn't feel right, none of that is enough. Like, you have to say those key words, I want a lawyer. And that's when questioning has to stop and how important those words are. And so we try and keep to those three phrases because not only are those phrases key in the legal field, but mm. they're also an indication to the officer you're interacting with that you're aware of what your rights are. And they're very key phrases that the officers recognize. And so we emphasize that that specific language is really important when you're interacting with police. Am I free to go? I do not consent to search. I'm going to remain silent. I want a lawyer. And so those are the three phrases that we really try and implement when we talk to you. You got this thing covered. <laughs> You're a lawyer, right? I am. Yeah, I can see why. I, 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 I can see that. Is there anything you want to add to this? I really want to emphasize, on top of what Francesca is saying, is you really want to keep yourself safe. That most of the time, when a young person is coming into contact with a police officer and they don't want to, they're going to be angry. They're going to feel, 
I'm being mistreated. And they're going to want to tell the police officer, you're jacking me up. The more you can hold on to your anger mm. and save it, the safer you are going to be. That the, whether or not the officer has a right to do whatever he or she is doing, you do, not, you do want to walk away from that situation. And it is really, really important to protect yourself. Tell the officer, I am going to remain silent. I do not consent to your searching me. But don't cuss the officer out. No. Don't lie to the officer. Don't run away from the officer. <laughs> All of those are things that are going to get you into more trouble. When I was talking to Dr. Marshall before coming on the show, he was asking me about when you're driving in your car, does the officer have a right to ask for your driver's license? Yes. Whether you have committed a traffic infraction or a crime or not, the officer has a right to ask for that. If the officer has stopped you for no reason and is just keeping you on the street under some kind of a pretext, be polite. Don't give them information other than your name, your date of birth, provide your driver's license or other form of ID. Keep yourself alive so that you can fight if there is something unjust going on, so you can fight that in the courtroom later. When you overreact on the street, that makes you unsafe and it makes other people around you unsafe. You know, I wish I had the office. You guys come back up here, quick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I got to do this. I know, I know, it's live and we're moving around. But, but you're listening to this, and I just want to see, you know, I mean, it's, look, if they're telling them one thing and you're saying, uh, yeah, that's really good. How do you feel about what, about what they said in their encounters uh, 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 with officers and, you know, what they're saying to young people? And in particular, this thing comes up a lot. I'm sure we've ever heard this. When you're... Because it happened to me, right? First thing, your police force, you said, what did I do? What did I do? What are the obligations that officers, I, I think I know because I've heard this a bunch of times, but that is one of the steps confusing because people only know what did I do. Should officers respond? Do they have to respond? What do you do with that? But first of all, this is the general information that they gave. Is that, does that sound, what do you think? I think yeah, it's good advice. It's it good good advice. 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 Y'all heard the police statement, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, really, go ahead. It is, it's, I don't mean to jump in too quickly. It is, it's excellent advice. And I'm glad, um, as a department, we're trying to put out similar information. I, I, would, I would like to say, though, in conjunction with what was uh, provided by um, the young lady, the attorney, um, we're, we're teaching our officers to learn how to engage with the youth. So we have a lot of officers that we put through uh, extensive training to, to learn how to speak and how, learn how to listen. So I don't, I, there, there's a, a little bit of a mixed message when it's, it's said don't speak to the officer, don't give more information than necessary. I, I'd like to believe that my officers, the officers that work under, under my supervision and at the department in general, are doing the right things for the right reasons. And so if they encounter you, I'd like to believe that they're, now we know that they're human, right? And then humans are flawed, but the general uh, majority of officers are doing the right thing for the right reasons. So I would ask personally on top of the information uh, to comply with the officer, always be safe, but but be cooperative. Um, you're gonna you you give respect, you're gonna get respect, and oftentimes that's what happens if uh, a situation you hear information such as only give your name, your date of birth, and your ID if you have it. That doesn't mean be uncooperative. That doesn't mean be disrespectful. Again, um, to me, it's really basic. Something I've learned uh, as as a young boy. Something I teach my kids. Um, respect those and they'll respect you so uh, that's, that's yeah and, I, and I like to add in uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, walk-in officers in our downtown area and what I instill in them is to have conversations with people uh, you know walking to and from their job uh, visiting establishments 
and be friendly because we get that a lot. Officers, you don't have you don't you you have a frown on your face and you don't speak to nobody. So I encourage my officers to talk to people. So if they're trying to engage someone in a conversation and they're saying, I'm not gonna talk to you, I can't talk, <laughs> it's kind of productive, but but I see what they're saying, but I do encourage my officers to just spark up conversations right. with people because I don't want all of our law enforcement count encounters to be something negative. Right. I want I want them to get something positive out of it. And I, I would add to it, it's officers have to respect individuals' rights, and we know that. And despite how the situation turns, if somebody um, gets irritated because they, you know, stopped or they feel like they got stopped unjustly, you know, our, our officers, all officers have to be professional. And, you know, we get paid uh, to be professional. So we understand, I think the vast majority of us understand that it's a very, very traumatic for most people to get stopped by police, particularly if you're going to get a ticket or you get stopped. And there are, I think to your question, there are some basic things that we train our folks to do, our officers to do in terms of when, you, when you're making a stop, you should be explaining to people why you're stopping them. Mm. That's one okay, of the first things that you Absolutely. do. And I think we've all been trained that way. And I think most departments will train hear. their people mm -hmm. uh, why, why you're being stopped. And again, it does go back to two-way respect. But in the event that, you know, people get, you know, tempers get out of line or whatnot, we still have to be professional no matter what. Uh, anything you want to add here? Are they like, are you in harmony and sync? What, what do you think? You know, it's great if you can strike up a friendly conversation <laughs> with two people. One of them happens to be wearing a police uniform. That's wonderful. I tell clients, if you've been a victim of a crime, yeah. the police is there to be is your friend. But if the police suspect you of committing a crime, that is really when you need to keep quiet because you need to protect yourself both from misidentification for a criminal act you didn't commit and if they think you committed a crime they're not there to help you they're there to arrest you and i i would just add that we always tell youth that we teach our lyric curriculum too that it is important to treat police officers with respect, regardless mm -hmm. of how you feel about police officers, that when you are interacting with a police officer for your safety, for their safety, for everyone's safety, it is important to act with a certain level of respect. But it's also important to know what your rights are in that situation and to understand, especially for young people, that beyond community policing, the police their job is to investigate crime, to solve crime, and so you need to understand that sometimes what may seem like a harmless conversation may be something that ends up implicating you in a crime, and so it's important to know your rights in that situation. And so we're not saying to be disrespectful to a police officer who tries to engage you in conversation, but we are saying that you do not have to engage in that conversation you do not have to uh, provide information that is not necessary. And a lot of times, especially with young people, they will inadvertently provide information that may implicate them in some way. And so what we tell young people is that it is safer to give the information that is necessary to be respectful, but not to engage in extensive conversation with law enforcement. I, I don't think that's being disrespectful in any way, but that is part of our curriculum. I, I would think that the, 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 the body camera is something now that is the evaluator of everything that goes on. It, it I, I, I think, you know, if, if, if you were concerned that this was, it, it, it's no longer, it's less of a he say, she say situation, or right. he say, he say, or she say, she say, <laughs> if we got everybody on the department, yeah. right? <laughs> When you got that visual evidence right there, uh, and I, I would think just for me, if, if, if I'm an encounter and I follow this, you're going to have a record of what really happened. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's what's showing up. And if you guys want to talk about that, yes, that so, would be great. So yeah. our, our body worn cameras, it's, it's twofold, right? So ah. it, it makes the officer put themselves in check, right? Because everything's been filmed. And then in turn, it puts that citizen in check sometimes, right? So if they want to make a complaint, Right. They, they, you know, make some accusations against the, the, the officer and then we go back and check the body cam. It can either refute or corroborate that citizen's complaint but with that officer. That officer knows that he or she 
is being filmed audio and visual, right? So if, if the, the um, uh, visual part does, is not caught, but the audio part is, is caught. So they know that the level of um, scrutiny and, and the eyes and ears that are on them, so it, it checks them, themselves in, in each and every call that they go to. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I, I, body cameras definitely help. Body worn video, it, it definitely helps. Um, it's, it's not an end all because sometimes you use certain angles or it depends on when it was turned on. Um, but it, it helps, and you have to understand also, too, the policies of the organization who you're dealing with. I mean, I, each organization is going to have their own uh, policies on, on body worn cameras, and ours is, is really clear that we. In San Francisco, we aim to be transparent, and there are three conditions in which we won't release body cam. If there's, first, if there's a danger to a witness or, or an officer involved in that video. Secondly, if it impedes or prohibits or hampers an investigation. And thirdly, um, if there's a legal reason not to release it. Otherwise, we want to be transparent, but each city is different. And what I've seen in my former uh, department is there, there was some frustration because of the policies there were very strict on body cams and the videos uh, did not get released mm -hmm. and that caused you know quite a bit of frustration among the public and I know that's being debated right now in in that city but um, it, so you, you should understand that as well what the policy is of the organization in terms of body cams because many people you know want to see it and uh, depending on the policy of the organization uh, you might not be able to and that's at 18,000 apartments in right. the United States who do things differently. In fact, maybe that's the question we can get to later about uh, when body camera footage must be released, how it can be released, and, and we, we, we can slowly talk about Oakland and San Francisco. You know, I, I got a thought here. Uh, we're sort of getting on the same page here because we've got both of you in the same room. I, is there a way to, to, when you talk about, you know, to, to, to have them talk to officers and have officers talk to them? For what I've seen in this, being on this, in this business for a long time is that op often we operate in silos and that, uh, you know, it would be great if you could talk to the officers in the academy, you know, and, and, and is, is that kind of thing happen now or would, would even we be open to, to something like that? Well, okay. having, having worked in the training division for our department, uh, this is something that does happen. And I'd love to get your card afterwards just to have a, a deeper conversation with you about it. Because yeah, dude. You're, you're Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I'm on the radio. Was that not? I forgot, I forgot. I'm a host. That's a nice show. <laughs> well, and, and we are teaching this. We bring a lot of uh, outside uh, citizen I interaction to the academies. We have presenters, uh, both pro, uh, pro and, uh, you know, against the police, and giving their perspective. One, one particular course, uh, is our procedural justice course. We're uh, throughout the course of the uh, training, a variety of um, citizens come and tell our young officers how they feel, how they've been treated by the police, and give gives them a, a kind of firsthand account of their interactions and what what's to be expected of the officer, and then uh, likewise what's to be expected of citizens. Uh, Lieutenant Hoofen is one of the instru instructors of the procedural justice program. Probably can enlighten us a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. It, it gives different perspectives, right? So we can hear from a law enforcement uh, perspective, but until we hear exactly from that citizen what they expect, we may not know, right? So uh, when they tell us, hey, look, this is what we expect when we encounter law enforcement. And so it gives them that fresher perspective. And then so when uh, when they're out in the streets and they're, they're given the procedural justice training, right, they they're, uh, know how to be respectful. They know how to be trustworthy. They know how to give that citizen that voice and being neutral in their decision making. So armed with that information, uh, it gives them better tools out there to interact with the public. Yeah, I think the goal here for me is to get everybody on the same page. Uh, if uh, you're telling the young people one thing, I don't want it to contradict or be anything radically <laughs> different than what the officers, the officers I'm thinking should actually hear what they're telling the young people, uh, or people period, but certainly young people, so that, you know, they're, they're, and they're getting it from public defenders, right? right. People and uh, vice versa. So if, if that's something that can happen, I, I think it would be really, 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 really great. And I'm glad you, reached out to you, we're bridge builders here. You <laughs> and asked, her, you're good, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're good too, they're all good. But, but yeah, I just love, look, I don't want anything to happen because of lack of information. I didn't know, the worst thing I hear from young persons, I didn't know. 
you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Anything you want to add? We got a couple minutes here in this segment. You want to add to 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 them? Uh, you can't you can't have dead time on the radio, honey. Say something. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's hard to come up with particular things to to add it. I just think it's really important for, especially for young people who are more vulnerable to being drawn into conversations that may seem innocent and community building, but may have ulterior motives to just know your rights, to be empowered by that, to know what you do and don't have to do. And it's fine if, if you feel comfortable having a conversation or if it feels like a friendly conversation, but it's also important to know what your rights are in that situation. And for a lot of young people especially, it's very intimidating if an officer comes up and begins talking to you and you feel like you have to answer every question they ask you. And so to just know that at any given moment you have the right, and it doesn't matter whether it's halfway into a conversation or right at the beginning of your encounter that you do have the right to say am I free to go and that's really empowering I feel for young people to know that that they have that power in that moment um, absolutely agree. absolutely, absolutely agree. We see, agree we all agree we all agree we all agree uh, I hope you, you you're taking notes you're taking notes taking notes because we have a chance that you got you got questions when it comes up Yes. Yeah. Oh, see, when they're ready. So, uh, look, we got to go back to break. We got to go back to break, and uh, I'm gonna, I really want to thank you for this. This, this is I didn't, I, I didn't expect to bring you back up here, We're but you know I'm up. a teacher. So when the, the teachable <laughs> moment comes up, this is when we make it happen. Uh, we got to go to break. We'll be back with our next panel. We don't have to go to break. We got ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Thank you, man. thank you, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll be back, everybody. We'll be back. Okay.